You're watching KCMI TV. Well, are you ready to get into the word of the Lord? Uh, I think that uh, we're going to have a good time today. I, I actually um, wasn't going to teach on this today. And uh, the last couple of days, I just can't get away from it in prayer. I really felt a mandate from the Lord to talk about this. And um, I want to talk about the presence of the Lord. And um, forgive me for being emotional. This is something that's uh, very, very close to my heart. Um, there's nothing in my life, and I think that many of you would say the same thing, that, that has higher value to us than being in the presence of God. Whether it's in an individual setting in prayer or, um, or in the church. And so, um, you know, the presence of the Lord, there are really no words uh, to be able to, to describe, to capture the essence of what the presence of God is. And you would, you would ask one person, what's the presence of the Lord? And they would, they would give you a description and then you would ask somebody else and they would give you something totally different because the presence of God is, is, it's so large, it's forever evolving. It's, it touches us and it's different uh, depending on where we are in our life, whether we're on a mountain or we're in a valley, uh, when we encounter the presence of the Lord, it will manifest, he will manifest himself to us difference. And so um, I, I think that, uh, and we'll talk about this as we get on into this podcast, but um, I don't think that there has been the value on the presence of God that there should have been. And that could be why uh, the church and the nation is in the trouble that it's in. I think of the verse where the psalmist said this, all in thy presence is fullness of joy. And, you know, I, I've been in services where um, there was a highlight in the service or you know, you left and you thought, well, that, that was good. But in the presence of God, he didn't say there's just a moment where you feel a goosebumps or whatever. He said, there is a fullness of joy. There's a complete joy. The presence of God satisfies the soul of man like nothing else. There's, it's incomparable. Uh, you can be in a very... <clears throat> deep valley and you know whether it's you can't pay your bills or you're troubled with a child or you're dealing with a very serious sickness in your body and you can get in in the presence of the lord and it's almost like it gives you amnesia you, you just forget about because i think the presence of god what it does he just he raptures you up. He, he elevates you up into his realm and you get in the presence of the glory of God. And, uh, you know, when you read in the scriptures about uh, the angels in the presence of the Lord and the four and 20 elders, the four and 20 elders, they had great accomplishments. We know this because they wore crowns. But when they got in the presence of God, everything all of a sudden that they had accomplished seemed so insignificant just just metal and when they saw god hallelujah they would just take their crowns off and they said they're not valuable to me they would throw their crowns on the ground their accomplishments that that perhaps other men had had honored them with and they said but oh in comparison to the presence of the lord it doesn't matter so in the presence of god hallelujah Oh, the presence of the Lord, there's just something about it that draws me. I, I think of the song we sing, Zion is calling me to a higher place of praise. And um, I think one of our issues today is, and this is why I believe we really lost this younger generation, is the church is full of entertainment 
but not the presence of God. We have uh, evolved to a place that most gatherings on Sunday function well without the presence of the Lord. I mean, it's even stereographed down to the point that this is, we're going to do this for 15 seconds and this is two minutes and 20 seconds and this is the, the little sermon. And unfortunately, um, leaders today have created a church that's about entertaining sheep instead of entertaining the presence of the Lord. And, uh, you know, <clears throat> when we become more um, cognizant of, let's make sure everybody had a good time instead of did we, did we draw the presence of God in? See, the presence of the Lord will, will take your 22-year-old daughter that's been away from God, and if you can just get her in the building, there is something about the presence of God that will get a hold of a wayward soul. And you look over there, and tears be flowing down their, down their face and because they've just had a divine encounter with their Creator. And um, <clears throat> we... We, especially leaders, they they want they don't want anybody to leave. They want everybody to to fill up the building. You know, we want uh, great offerings, and so we feel like if we just entertain people, but see, the church was never meant to be entertainment. The church was created hallelujah it's the body of christ it's connected to the head which is jesus it was meant um, to to change lives and so um entertaining sheep and feeding sheep are very different um, whenever we put more emphasis on making sure that sheep are entertained then feeding them we wind up with very sick sheep and when we begin to shift our emphasis back to making sure that when people leave the house of god that they are fed and you see, and and in the scriptures it talks about the bread of his presence and see when when you can create an environment uh, where the presence of God <clears throat> comes in, people, you automatically, you begin to feed on the things of the Lord. And, <clears throat> you know, over the years, especially traveling, I got so frustrated over the years uh, with, with what I saw was called worship. And it wasn't worship, you know, it was just entertainment. And um, a lot of times it seemed like the, the worship leader was doing a solo or we were singing songs that were so wordy the congregation couldn't sing them or they were so complicated they couldn't flow with them. Uh, worship, um, when you read where, like in Solomon, when he's dedicating the temple of the Lord, because prior to that dedication, you know, they finished it, but there wasn't any presence of God in that building. And so the Bible says that what they did was they begin to sacrifice flesh. The amount of animals that, that Solomon sacrificed that day uh, in worship to God to entreat his presence was in the hundreds of thousands, the amount of flesh that was killed. Um, one of the things that will draw God into your personal prayer life and into our corporate gatherings is when we take our flesh and we sacrifice it unto the Lord. And, um, you know, when flesh um, is burning, there's a smell to it. But when we, offer, when we offer our flesh as a sacrifice unto God, our God is a consuming fire. It is a sweet smelling fragrance to the Lord because 
when we begin to offer it to the Lord in sacrifice, it takes on an aroma that is pleasing to God. And, uh, you know, it's difficult. Nobody wants to die to the flesh. But I can tell you this, uh, the way that we get God into our, uh, we get his presence in our lives and in our services is through worship. We worship him. And when we begin to worship God, see, um, God's, he can't stand, he can't with, withstand worship. When you begin to worship God, if God was busy, he go, oh, I got to drop everything. I've got to go down there because I cannot stay away from worship. It, it, there's something that that you and I have in us that when we begin to worship God and, and many times when I go to prayer, I just tell the Lord, you know, you're the air that I breathe. I exist only because of you. God, you're not just my helper. You're not just my father. You're the very essence of my existence. I love you. You're my creator, God. I praise you. I honor you. And, and oh, when I begin to do that, I can feel the presence of the Lord begin to come in. And um, five times at least, the writer says this, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. She said, well, pastor, you know, how do I bless the Lord? Well, first of all, begin to remember the benefits. You know, thank you goes a long ways. When God has done such amazing things for all of us, and sometimes we get so caught up in life that, you know, remember in the New Testament when the 10 lepers came to Jesus and, and he healed them all. And he said only one came back and worshiped him and said, thank you. And the Lord said, where's the other nine? Forget not all of his benefits. Uh, we draw God's presence. If we do not have the presence of the Lord increase, we're going to perish. If we do not have churches, if we do not have ministry, if we do not have pastors who begin to go back and put the priority on the presence of God, uh, we're not going to make it. And, um, you know, sometimes you will, ladies will, or, uh, you know, a, We'll want to invite somebody over to the house, have a guest, and we're going to have a dinner. The preparation that you go through is determined by the value that you put on the guest. If it's somebody that you just you're not really that excited about, you know, you're going to throw out a quick salad and and, and macaroni and cheese and a store bought cake from Kroger's. But if there's somebody that you really value, you're going to take time. You're going to go to some expense. You're going to put yourself out. You're going to go through some labor and preparation because you want that guest when they leave to be satisfied. I think many times we rush into the presence of God and we want to invite him to come to a love feast. But we didn't take any, we didn't make any preparation. We did not put value on the presence of God. There is no higher honor than putting value on the presence of the Lord. It's kind of a humorous anecdote, but years ago, um, my wife and I were invited by a couple that we really liked, and they said, We want you to come over to our house for a get together. And we thought, wow, this is this is really great. You know, they like us. And they said, we're inviting a few other couples over. And so, you know, we, we got dressed up and we were really excited about coming to their home. And uh, we got to their home and, you know, met the other couples and we're enjoying each other. And then this guy brings out a whiteboard and it turns out the only reason we were there is he was going to do an Amway presentation. And I thought, oh man, we have been deceived and tricked. And, we, and all of the excitement about the invitation went away because I realized that 
they w didn't want us there for them or for us. They wanted us because they just wanted something from us. And there have been so many times, and, and I've been guilty of this, we want, we invite God into our life. And when he gets there, there's no worship involved. There's no thank you. There's no, I love you. It's just, God, I need you to do something for me. And I think that it hurts the feelings of the Lord when the only time that we want him around is when we need something. Sometimes you just need to tell the Lord, would you come down and visit with me? I just miss you. Will you come down and, and fellowship with me? I don't need anything from you. I'm just, when I think of all of your benefits, oh, my soul blesses you, God. And when God comes down, then there's that sweet, sweet fellowship. And so as we end today, I, I would challenge you. What kind of preparation do you make in your prayer time? What kind of preparation do you make on a daily basis for the presence of God? Even when you go to church, are, are you getting there late? Um, is your mind distracted? Bring God your best. Take the flesh and sacrifice it and offer it into the Lord as a sweet smelling fragrance and see what God will do in your life. Well, I hope that this has challenged you today and encouraged you. I love you, and I'll see you next week. For more information about Kent Christmas Ministries International or Regeneration Nashville, go to kentchristmas.org or regenerationnashville.org.